All right, so today we're installing a radio in this 2014 Focus. The radio in this car started buzzing and popping, and it had a lot of static. So we ordered this little kit off eBay for $150. This is a plug and play kit. It just goes right in. You actually take your vents and put it here, and this is your vent adjuster. But this is a tablet style radio. I mean, for $150, it's not bad. We're gonna hop in, install it, and see how it works. I'm probably not gonna install the GPS antenna because it's your phone's gonna be connected. But yeah, it's supposed to be plug and play, antenna, micro USB. Got all your RC cables you can plug in if you wanna hook a system up. So we're gonna hop in here and get this started. All right, so to start with, you're gonna want a T25. You got two screws down here in the bottom. So we're gonna take those out and then we're gonna pop the radio out. So then you're gonna wanna grab it from the bottom and pop out. This thing just pops right out and you can get to your plug at the back. There's only one plug and then that's the actual display. This is just the buttons. The actual radio is right here that goes bad. So if you don't really want to install a kit like this, you can actually get one of these and replace it and your radio will be fine. Like I said, this radio started buzzing, having a lot of static, playing nothing. And then sometimes the display would be blank. You try to turn the radio on and it wouldn't do nothing. And then you could be going down the road and all of a sudden it just starts buzzing as loud as it can. So the button, I tried, it didn't fix it. This is actually the unit that's bad. So we're gonna disassemble this, put it on the new radio, cause you gotta put your vents on the new radio and your adjusters, vent block offs. So we're gonna do that now. So here's what we got. So we're gonna swap this over. If you look right here, you need to take a little flathead, just pry them down and pull up on the vents a little bit and just go along go along and you got some on the back side you have to do once you do that these pop right off and go right to the corresponding tabs all right so as you can see this is where the bottom of your screws are that you pulled out this has got a, like a little vent here this is the piece that comes with the aftermarket radio so you have to simply pop this piece off without breaking it you know it's chinese but this is what you're right, so here's one of the problems we have this piece goes on after you get your vents in. This is like your beauty piece. Then you have your piece down there. But there's little vents that come out the bottom here. And this piece blocks them off. But this piece won't set flush because this vent is hitting it. So we're going to have to pop these little vents off and leave them open. But yeah, you can't get your screws started down here because the vent's holding it. So we're going to do that now. So basically this right here is the little air vent. I guess it just plugs out near the shifter. You just want to bend these tabs out of your way. And you got some on the back side. And we're just gonna pop this little vent off and leave it off. There's actually a little flap door in here. But we're gonna get rid of all of that. So then we're gonna do this side. It's pretty simple. I don't really like this, the fact that it's just gonna be blowing hot air in behind here, but I don't really think it's gonna really bother it. Cause this thing, that's made out of aluminum. That's a pretty good heat sink, so it pulls the heat right out of the unit anyway. So now this piece should fit properly. And it does. So we're gonna get, in, uh, get the screws in this and we'll be done with this part. So next, what we're gonna do is get rid of this unit and the screen there's four screws one here one here one here one here and this whole unit will pull out you can take these screws loose and pull the radio itself out but we're just going to pull the whole assembly and get rid of the screen and all because we don't need it so screw 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 so now all you gotta do is grab the unit pull it right out and unplug the plugs from the back one's pretty easy to unclip. That's for the screen display, which it doesn't matter. So these are your main ones you're gonna have to have. Your antenna. And your main. So you wanna push down on this little white tab right here and pull out and it unplugs. And that is basically back to the radio. It goes bad. So now all we should have to do is grab our aftermarket radio plugs Plug up, pop in, and we're done. This is really, really simple. All right. All right, so this is your RC 
A's for when you have a system, subwoofer, and auxiliary in and out. We're not going to plug this up because this car doesn't have a system in it. I will put it in the glove box for whoever buys it. So we're not using that one. But however, we will plug this up. We got a USB. We actually come with two USBs. We'll run these somewhere in the car. We'll hook those up. And this is your interface box that makes it ready to work. These plug into your factory plugs and makes it ready to turn on. And then it comes with an antenna adapter for that funny antenna we unplugged. It just plugs right up like that and then that converts it to an old style. So we got our antenna plugged in, our radio's plugged in. There's only one plug that goes into here. This doesn't go to nothing for this car. You know, there's not a spot to plug it in here. As far as this goes, it's for like a backup camera if your car comes factory. So this would plug right in and you'd better plug this into them RC cables that I'm not installing and your backup camera would work just fine. So everything's plugged up. There's gonna be a few little things that doesn't get plugged up like that. Don't worry about them, it doesn't matter. So I guess we're gonna tie these up a little bit, plug up our plug here for our lock, door locks and our hazard switch, and we're gonna wrap this install up. That should be it. Another thing to note, it does come with a plug for here. This is where your old screen was. If your car had a backup camera, it comes with the output. You would plug these RCs in that I'm not hooking up and you would just plug this into one of the auxiliary ends and you put it in reverse, this car actually tries to work but it doesn't have a camera so it won't work. But it does, if you have a backup camera then everything's gonna work like factory. So that's pretty cool. So as you see, if I put it in reverse, it does actually do all that but no camera. So it's actually a really cool setup. I'm sure the lines don't move with the steering wheel. All right, so now all you gotta do is you got this tab. You're gonna stick that under, slide it into place. Door lock works, hazards work. We're gonna get this thing fitted in here. Thing pops in and that looks, that looks good. So that's, that's installed. It's good. It actually looks really good in there. It's a little angled more than I would like, but you can still see it pretty good. That looks really good in here. Only thing that kind of bothers me is this knobs, like where a button would be for the old radio, but that's just plastic, nothing there. But yes, yeah, super nice in here. All right, so now we're just gonna reinstall our screws like factory and pop our plastic piece on, see how that's gonna fit. But other than that, all right, so like we're gonna reinstall these. Yeah, I do have to move the shifter back for this one screw unless you have a short enough screwdriver. So now that's in. Now we have this piece we have to pop on. Goes like that. And that's in. So we're done. So we can actually try the radio now. All right, so we're all installed. I'm gonna see the how fast it can turn on. So we're about to turn the key on and see. It's a key on. It's like instant. It comes right on. Wow, it's pretty quick. Basically, I mean, as soon as you touch the screen, it's like there. Like this thing is pretty awesome. But yeah, this thing's got YouTube. I mean, it's basically a tablet in your in your dash. Play Store. Basically, what you can do is take your Wi-Fi hotspot on like your iPhone or whatever and connect right to it. And you have internet, have a tablet. You can watch TV going down the road. I wouldn't suggest it, but you can do it. It's got Google Maps. I did go ahead and hook the GPS antenna up and stick it to the inside the dash just to do it in case... Google Maps would work with it, but I'm still sure you have to have internet for that. So, yeah, I've already listened to this thing. It sounds pretty damn good to be what it is. For $150, you can't beat it. Another really cool thing about this radio is you hit settings, device port, and that's the back of the radio. What's really cool is you can tap that and 
that's your location on the back for your different plugs. It actually tells you what every pin now is. If you're not sure about where something goes, like these are just reserves and we're not used for nothing. But it tells you, it tells you every port, what they do. So that's, that's another really cool thing about this radio. And you got this one, which is your radio plug, it tells you your speakers and all that. But yeah, this radio is really, really awesome. I mean, you can't beat it for $150. That's just pretty hard to believe. It's honestly a really good upgrade for one of these cars, even if your radio still does work. All right, so we're done with this install. I would 100% recommend this radio. It's really good. So this actually works for a 12 to 17 model. So I'd probably order one, even if your radio is not bad, I would use it. So I guess until the next one.